In the past, I've released plenty of analyses on how coffee is a benefit to our health, especially for our heart health. However, although we can look at large data sets and get a general idea, we need to go through with a finer tooth comb to catch exceptions. And that's what the research has started to uncover. As they began looking at how people prepare their coffee, finding that one method continues this trend of improved health from coffee consumption, while another method leads to the reversal or even health harm. So what are the methods and why is there a difference in the effects on our health? And how likely are you to rip me limb from limb if I tell you that coffee is now unhealthy for you? Well, I'll answer the last one now. It's highly unlikely because that's not going to be the conclusion here. As for the first question, what kind of methods? We're talking about two broad camps. So one is filtered coffee and the other is unfiltered coffee. Now I'll get into more specifics of each later, but that distinction is enough to identify a difference in the health effects. Now, interestingly, in this initial study that I had on screen, there were about half a million participants, so men and women, including all age ranges from 20 to 80. And when looking at the data split by men and women, we see a bunch of numbers. But I don't want this to be a boring numbers presentation, so I'll leave the data up for those that know how to read it, and I'll highlight a few specifics in graph form here. Now, both of these graphs are total mortality risk. So dying from any cause. We have four groups, those that consume no coffee, the heathens, those that consume both forms of brewing, and then the filtered and unfiltered individually. The yellow vertical line indicates a neutral relationship, and if the red lines and dots move to the left, that means reduced risk of death from all causes compared to those who don't consume any coffee. So funny enough, <laughs> These data corroborate past data indicating that coffee overall is probably a benefit to our health. You can breathe again. But you'll note that the benefit of unfiltered coffee tends to lag behind by a bit or be non-existent. Still, nothing here indicates harm. So why is there any concern at all? It comes down to this, a peculiar phenomenon that makes age a major factor. Same rules that apply as last time, and I'm focusing on men here, but similar trends are seen in women, just not as extensively. For those under the age of 60, there's a reduced risk of cardiovascular de death, even with unfiltered coffee. However, in those over 60, the risk flips for the same unfiltered coffee. Suddenly, risk of death increases, not seen with filtered coffee. So the main point here is that the filtered coffee has a consistent track record of being neutral or positive for health. Unfiltered coffee has a much more mixed track record with harmful relationship identified in those over 60. Okay, interesting. But why exactly? Well, there's a number of reasons. The researchers of this study that we've been leaning on mentioned that unfiltered coffee can raise blood cholesterol levels, and that has been verified a few times over in these studies. So, okay, fair enough if that happens. And when we do adjustments, meaning that we remove blood cholesterol as a factor statistically, the researchers do mention that there's a reduced relationship with ischemic heart disease. That, now, that's a type of heart disease where the plaque builds up in the blood vessels of the heart. But... I remain unconvinced because while the relationship is weakened, implying that blood cholesterol does play a role here, it isn't eliminated. The relationship partly remains. That means that there's something else going on here too. Also, although we know that unfiltered coffee raises blood cholesterol, the studies directly testing this use pretty large amounts of coffee. So we're talking almost a liter per day just to see an 11 milligram per deciliter increase. Maybe we'd see similar increases with less consumed, but regardless, there is a cholesterol effect here. It just doesn't explain everything. There are other possibilities like the fact that the researchers adjust or statistically control for a variety of factors here, but they do not do any specific controls for diet or diet quality. This could be a major hole that explains the remaining relationship. We don't know. The bottom line, we aren't entirely clear on the mechanisms, though we do know some of them. Regardless, there's some easy takeaways that we can still get from all this research. Now, before that, this may not be for you, but 
If you want a more detailed analysis on the amounts of coffee related to health, more on the statistics and other such nerdities, then check out my full analysis on this topic, part of the Physionic Insider subscription. Plus, you get all these perks right here, including a monthly podcast covering a series of topics only for the insiders, or you can also join me in live sessions and the rest of the insider community. I'm actually going to be doing one of those live sessions this Sunday. So link to join is in the description box, and I hope to see you there. All right, so some easy takeaways. Well, when we're talking about unfiltered coffee, we're talking about coffee brewing techniques like the French press, uh, boiled coffee like Norwegian boiled coffee, Turkish and Greek coffee, espresso. And this actually might surprise some of you. You know those uh, single serve pods used in certain like companies and often in hotel rooms? Those are also unfiltered. So the bottom line is this. Filtered coffee continues to have a positive health track record. Unfiltered coffee has a less positive track record and likely should be avoided when possible. Now, the occasional drink isn't going to do much, just don't want it to be regularly consumed. So stick to a paper filter coffee. It's important that it's paper filtered as the other filters aren't fine enough to eliminate the harmful molecules trapped in the filter. So that's a few simple things to act on, but there's actually more to coffee than you might think. In this video right here, I go over more on some pitfalls that turn coffee from healthy to unhealthy. I'll catch you over there. Thanks for tuning in. I'll speak with you soon again.